Hello friends, this video on our environment part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So far we saw how organisms are dependent on one another for food. Now when I talk of food, it becomes very obvious to talk about energy. Because why do we eat food? We eat food because of energy, as we need energy to do work. Right? So the consumption of food is in order to get energy. So let us look at the flow of energy in a food chain. So how the energy flows from one level to another level as the organisms consumes one another. Right? So let us look at these examples. Now what happens when a herbivore feed on the producers, that is the plants? Let us take an example. So maybe when I talk about the producers, that is the plants, so how do these plants get energy? By the process of photosynthesis, right? So in photosynthesis, what do they do? They utilize the energy of sun, that is they utilize the solar energy and in presence of the solar energy, they convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and then they store it in the form of starch and that is how they prepare food. So basically, they are getting energy from solar energy. Now, can you guess how much percentage of the solar energy is actually getting converted into food? It is just 1% of solar energy which actually gets converted into food. So during the process of photosynthesis, it is just 1%. Just think how less it is. So if we say that, So if this is the sun, so now just to give you an estimation, let us suppose that 10,000 units of solar energy is coming in. Now plants will perform photosynthesis and prepare food. So how much energy will this plant have after performing photosynthesis? It will have just 1% of this 10,000. So 1% of this 10,000 would be nothing but 100 units. So this plant will have 100 units of energy with it. Now what do you think would happen when the primary consumer feeds on this plant? Who is a primary consumer? This is nothing but a herbivore, an animal which directly feed on plants. So when this grasshopper will eat this plant, do you think that this entire 100 units of energy will come to the grasshopper? No. Because when the grasshopper feeds on this plant, a good amount of energy will be lost as heat energy because we know that whenever the transformation of energy takes place, whenever energy tries to transform from one form to another, a good amount of it is lost as heat. Some part of the energy will be utilized by the grasshopper during digestion. Some energy will be utilized for performing different activities. Whatever the grasshopper will fly, it will do some work. So in that also some energy will get consumed. So it will keep on losing some energy that way. So finally, how much energy will be left with this grasshopper? 10% of the producer's energy is turned into its body. So that means 10% of the producer's energy, that means the energy which was there in the plant, only 10% of this energy will actually be there inside the body of the primary consumer, that is grasshopper. So 10% of 100 would be 10, right? So only 10 units of energy will be there in the grasshopper. Now similarly, when the secondary consumer, that is the frog, will consume the grasshopper. In that case, what will happen? The similar thing will happen. So when the frog is also consuming the grasshopper, so so much of energy will get spent in the digestion process as well as so many other processes, the metabolic processes which keep happening inside the body of an animal. Some energy will be lost as heat. Heat. So similarly, in this case also, only 10% of the primary consumer's energy will turn into the body of the secondary consumer. That means 10% of this energy. So 10% of this energy is just one unit of energy. So you just see, as the level in the food chain keeps on increasing, the amount of energy which is actually coming to that animal is decreasing. Right? So if you go to the even that higher level, that is uh, the tertiary consumer, which is the snake here, in that case, how much energy will come here? Again, 10%. 
So 10% of this one unit is nothing but 0.1 unit. Right? So now if you have another level as well, maybe if you have a quaternary consumer as well, which can be a hawk. So how much energy will go to that hawk's body? It will be 10% of this 0.1 unit. So it will be 0.01 unit of energy. So now we are you able to understand that if the number of levels in a food chain is too many, then what is actually seen is that the highest level in that food chain will hardly get any energy because as the level keeps increasing, the amount of energy that comes to that organism keeps on decreasing. Right? So therefore, we will see that most of the food chains which actually exist inside an ecosystem generally consist of three to four levels. They do not have more than that. They do not have 10 levels or nine levels because then you will have hardly any energy left to be transferred to the higher level of organisms. Right? So this is how the energy flow actually takes place in a food chain. It is always the 10% of the previous level's energy that will actually get transferred to a trophic level. Right? Okay. So from this was derived the Lindemann's 10% law. By now you would have known that what is this 10% law. This states that only 10% of food energy is transferred from one trophic level to the next higher trophic level in a food chain. That means whatever energy the plant has, only 10% of it will go to the grasshopper. Again, whatever energy the grasshopper has, only 10% of it will go to the frog. Again, 10% of it goes to the snake and the 10% of it finally goes to the hawk. And that is why it is never preferred to have too many levels in a food chain. So energy decreases as the tropic level increases. Therefore, food chains will generally consist of three to four levels. Also, it is seen that the number of organisms at lower levels is more. So if you see, when you talk about the plants, that is the producers, the number of plants are too many. There will be too many plants because the dependency of plant on plants is too much, right? Because there are so many other organisms which are dependent on plants. So the number of producers would be the highest. Then comes the primary consumer, that is the grasshoppers. So the number of grasshoppers will be little lesser than the plants. When you go to the even higher level, that is frogs. So the number of frogs will be little lesser. So when you go to snakes, they are even little lesser. Why is it so? Because lesser amount of energy is available to the higher levels. So when you don't have much energy, you will not have much organisms, right? Because every organism will need some more energy. Now you might say, now whenever you talk about higher organisms, for example, a, a, a grasshopper, maybe it will feed on a little a small amount of plants. Now when I talk of a frog, maybe the frog will feed on some 5 to 6 grasshoppers at a time because the amount of energy which it will get from each grasshopper is not going to be enough for it. So it will consume some 5 to 6 grasshoppers. Similarly, when you talk about snakes, they will also consume multiple number of frogs. Right? So since it continues in that fashion because the amount of energy that is available to the higher levels are comparatively lesser, therefore the number of organisms or the population of the higher levels are also lesser when compared to the lower levels. So we have more number of organisms at the lower levels as compared to the higher levels. So let us look at the energy pyramid, that is the flow of energy. What do we conclude from our discussion about the flow of energy? We saw that the energy flow is unidirectional. That means it can flow only in one direction. Uni means one. So here we saw that the energy flow happens from plants to the primary consumer from primary consumer to secondary consumer, from secondary consumer to tertiary consumer. Do you think that the flow of energy can happen in the other direction as well? Now the goat gets its energy from the plants because it feed on the plants. So is there any way by which the energy from the goat can be transferred back to the plants? No, because the plants cannot feed on the goats, right? Or the goats cannot feed on a jackal or a jackal cannot eat up a lion. So the reverse 
thing is not at all possible and that is why the flow of energy is also not possible in the reverse direction. So we say that the energy flow in a food chain is unidirectional. So it will always flow from the lower tropic levels towards the higher tropic levels. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.